Searching for Noah's Ark by B.J. Corbin. Notice the image on the first slide here, the comet map of paradise from around 1730, showing Noah's Ark on top of Mount Ararat, but not the Mount Ararat in modern Turkey, but in the Zagros Mountains near Ekbatani in Media, which would be modern Hamadan, Iran, at the base of Avon Mountain. I first saw this map while reading the book Noah, The Person and the Story in History and Tradition by Lloyd Bailey. Some background. Involved with the search for Noah's Ark since 1986, participated in four expeditions to Mount Ararat in Turkey, 1988, 89, 90, and 98. Created the website com, Initiated and co-authored the book The Explorers of Ararat and the Search for Noah's Ark. Featured on the History Channel program History's Mysteries, The Search for Noah's Ark, wrote and published via lulu.com the book Seven Mountains to Arata, Searching for Noah's Ark in Iran. For more information, visit my website, bjcorbin.com. The picture actually is from the History Channel, um, History, History's Mysteries, The Search for Noah's Ark. Uh, that was in the Richmond Law Library in Richmond, Virginia, probably back in the early 1990s. Um, my uh, search for Noah's Ark actually even started before that in the 70s. I read the book Noah's Ark I Touched It by Fernand Navarro. I believe my mother gave me that book back in uh, the mid 1970s. Why search Mount Ararat in Turkey? The Bible states in Genesis 8 4, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Many connect Mount Ararat in Turkey as the location where Noah's Ark landed based on Genesis 8-4. There have been many claims of discovery on Mount Ararat, but none have been verified. My first book with Rex Geisler and other researchers, The Explorers of Ararat, chronicles many expeditions and alleged sightings of Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat in Turkey. The picture on the right was taken by Ross Meehan back in 1988. Thanks, Ross. Um, it says Mount Ararat with the peak of Little Ararat showing in the far right of the picture at nearly 17,000 feet where the, its permanent ice snow-capped peak is the tallest mountain in the region. So Big Ararat's around 17,000 um, feet elevation, uh, snow-capped on the left, and Little Ararat to the right is probably around 13,000 feet. 1988 Willis Expedition after Dr. Willis had been on several previous expeditions to Ararat, he surmised the ark remains must be buried under a stable ice pack on the summit. For Willis, the eastern summit at approximately 16,800 feet was the prime target area. GPR, ground penetrating radar, was used to survey the eastern ice cap. Even though there was a ghost image at one point and lots of excitement, no conclusive evidence was found even after several holes were drilled in the ice. Uh, interest f uh, on this site, the Eastern Plateau, was rekindled around 2012-2013 over several years. Um, they used a more sophisticated GPR radar and more sophisticated uh, ice drilling and cutting. I think they found some organic material, but again, like so many other uh, sites on Ararat, no conclusive uh, evidence was provided. Just a few more pictures of the Willis Expedition. Top left was the uh, on the eastern plateau, the, the team there, um, that's me in the red on the bottom left kneeling. Uh, top right picture is the Mutepi base camp southeast of Ararat, around 13,000 feet. Uh, bottom left is a much um, thinner and younger BJ, I think at Camp 2. And bottom right is Scott Little and myself getting ready to summit. nineteen eighty nine Aaron Garvey Corbin expedition. Uh, the nineteen eighty nine team utilized a helicopter, uh, I think it was a Huey five hundred C, to transport gear and team to the western summit plateau around fifteen thousand feet. The team had limited success using a portable GPR to survey the western ice cap. Some very deep soundings, over two hundred feet, led the team to surmise the area could be a volca volcanic caldera which would be like a sunken volcanic cone. A photo uh, taken of our flag survey area provided a good scale of the arc on, on the summit. The expedition was uh, 
one of the more exciting ones. We uh, first saw that was my first helicopter ride, uh, landing uh, at 15,000 feet on the western summit. Uh, shortly after we set up camp, two men slid down uh, to us and noticed they both had machine guns. They yelled at us and did not seem to approve of our high-tech radar and camera equipment on the summit. Eventually, our leader, Chuck, uh, got them to talk with someone down below in the town of Doe Bizet on walkie-talkie and kind of saved their butts. Um, the videographer and photographer, Paul Schemer, requested to be picked up after the incident, who can blame him, and replaced by David Montgomery, son of Air Ride Explorer John Montgomery. Um, also on the team was Kathy Montgomery, John Wanvig, Debbie Redmer, Jerry Garvey, Chucky, and uh, Chuck's, uh, Aaron, and Chuck's wife. Uh, David Montgomery accidentally drank some generator fuel that was unwisely put in a water bottle, so he had to be helicoptered off to a nearby hospital. And then uh, after that shaky landing, they wouldn't come back and pick us up, so we were forced to... Uh, uh, Chuck, Bob, and I, the three of us, to get off the mountain, and we saw one of the... Uh, uh, tourist uh, guides and flagged him over and he helped us uh, get off the mountain but uh, we were so tired we, we were basically stuck in the rocks at 14,000 feet so it was a very long cold night so um, uh, there was actually a book written about it it was uh, quite a lot happened in that 1989 uh, expedition but uh, Chuck Aaron I tell you he's a heck of a courageous guy and a heck of a helicopter pilot 1990 the Shockey Ball Expedition team had a climb, climber uh, the year before confirm an object or structure in the Abbott Glacier. A helicopter was used to get up close video of the target area. Some objects of interest were later discovered, but no clear evidence for the remains of Noah's Ark. Permission was not granted for the team to climb to the target area. A video called Visions of Ararat was produced using video from this expedition, filmed by George Adams and produced by Rob Simmons. Uh, Ahmet Ali Arzalan was the climber who claimed to have seen the structure in the Abbott Glacier, and I think he said it looked like a chicken coop. Uh, Arzalan is a veteran Ararat climber and knows the mountain very well. Um, one of our team members in the helicopter, I believe it was a Russian Mi-8 helicopter, big yellow school bus looking thing. We had a Russian pilot and a Turkish pilot. We even had a flight attendant, Eifer. But anyway, he claimed to have seen laminated wood from the helicopter, but... Uh, I think it was more of a case of arc fever. Um, based on the, the Arson photo of the target area, I was able to um, use a small video monitor to assist uh, the videographer, George Adams, to get close-up video of the target area. 1998 Jim Hall trip. Several team members presented at the conference on Noah's Ark at Ataturk University in Erzurum, Turkey. The group visited several sites around the town of Doabizet and Mount Ararat, including the Drupanar and Kazan stones. There's a picture of the top right of our group that was around Ararat, Jerry Kitchens and Matt Nicer, Michael Holt, Sal Sali Barakatan, and myself, BJ at the bottom right. And that's me at the bottom right holding up one of the, the Kazan stones. Um, Jim Hall had coordinated t the team and the initial meeting was in Richmond, Virginia and included veteran ARC researcher John McIntosh. There were two camps of researchers in, in, in our group once we got to Turkey. One team was kind of pro Ararat, Matt Neisler, Michael Holt, and myself. And another team was kind of pro Darupanar, Rob Nicholson, David Deal, and Bill Shea. For more information about the Mount Ararat expeditions, visit noahsarksearch.com or purchase uh, or read online the book, The Explorers of Ararat. Uh, Noah's Ark Search is probably one of the best websites on the web. Uh, about the search for Noah's Ark. Rex Geiser uh, has done a great job. He's had a lot more research and content than when I originally started back in the 90s. There's still a few used copies of the Explorer Ararat online and suggest you visit um, Amazon.com. Did Noah's Ark land in Iran? The Bible states in Genesis 11:2, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east they found a, pl a plain in the land of Shinar and, and they dwelt there. This would imply some of Noah's family came from the Zagros Mountains in Iran into the plains near Babylon, modern day Iraq. The ancient Sumerians described on clay tablets a conflict between the leaders of Uruk and Arata. Uruk was in the plains of Iraq, while Arata is believed to be in the Zagros Mountains in Iran. 
The Sumerian tablets provided several clues for the location of Arata. The Book of Jubilees 821 states that Shem, Noah's son, was given the lands in the middle portion of the earth, which included Media and all the mountains of Ararat. Let me repeat, included Media and all the mountains of Ararat. Japheth, another son of Noah, was given the lands to the north, which would likely include Mount Ararat in Turkey, but not the mountains of Ararat near Media. One of Japheth's sons, Madai, declined his northern land portion, western Turkey, and chose to stay near Shem in the mountain of Noah. Madai is associated with the Medes, and whose ancient capital of Ekbatana, Hamadan, is near the base of Avon Mountain in Iran. Archaeological sites between Hamadan and Kermanshah are older than the plain sites in Mesopotamia, between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in Iraq, implying a migration pattern coming from the Zagros Mountains. Archaeological evidence of ancient wine at Godin Tepe and early goat domestication at Ganstera was found in the Iranian Zagros Mountains. If Noah's Ark did land in the uh, Iranian Zagros Mountains, Kui, which means mountain, Alvan seems the most likely candidate. Why Kui Alvan? Alvan fits the location of Arata based on Sumerian clues and, biblical, and the biblical location of people moving from the east into Shinar. Ararat, as referred to in the Bible, looks and sounds similar, similar to Sumerian Arata. Sumerian clues regarding the location of Arata. One travels from Uruk to Susa, they follow a river, go over seven mountains, and they really accentuate the five, six, and seven mountains in the text. And even when you look on the map below, they're really the, the last three mountains really stick out. Arata was rich with precious stones and metals, remote but still close enough to march an army from Uruk. See the other picture at the bottom right with the red mark showing the approximate location of uh, Kui Alvan. Alvan, closest mountain, holy mountain to Shinar. Both Eret and, and Kudi, pronounced Judy, are considered holy mountains in Turkey. Generally, Christians adhere to Mount Ararat as a landing site, while many Muslims consider Judy the landing site. In Iran, both uh, Damavan and Avon are considered holy mountains. When considering that people after flood were moving from the east, Avon is the closest holy mountain in proximity to where we believe Shinar is located. See the map below, or the picture below, showing the four mountains and how close Alvan is, and it is east of Shinar. So I think that fits both the Sumerian Arata and also the Biblical Ararat. More evidence of Alvan Mountain. Near the summit of Kuh Alvan is a stonewalled site believed to have been the tomb of Shem, one of Noah's sons. If true, that would support the Book of Jubilees 7.14-17 through 17 that states, Shem built a city and stayed close to Noah on the mountain. Alvan, it's 11,750 feet, is one of the tallest mountains in the region. Garin Mountain, at 11,910 feet, is slightly taller. Godin Tepe, an archaeological site near Alvan, revealed evidence of trading with Susa and Uruk. According to Sumerian accounts, Susa was on the way to the seven mountains in Arata. Archaeologists found evidence for early wine at the site. Noah planted a vineyard and molds to, to craft metals. These and other clues point to Godin Tepe as a possible ancient lo Sumerian location of Arata. Notice the summit and location of Shem's um, purported tomb and the left and the actual Shem tomb to the right. Supposedly there's, um, it was a, had like a mud brick covering over this site and if you look actually on the floor of this site there's pieces of uh, red uh, mud brick there. Susa to Godin Tepe, Arata. Google map right used to show ancient route from Susa to Godin Tepe near Kangavar, southwest of Alvan Mountain. Picture below of an exca excavation of Godin Tepe with Alvan in the background. Notice the map to the right. Basically from the Sumerian text, they'd go from Uruk to Susa, which would take five or six days. They, they, then they would go from Susa and follow the Karhe River. Um, to the seven mountains, go over the seven mountains, following the uh, to the right of the river, and then go around the Garan Mountain to Godin Tepe, which is um, near Kangavar. You can see where Arata is just southwest of Alvan Mountain, which I think is the 
area of Arado. For more information, visit my website, bjcorbin.com, or purchase the book, Seven Mountains to Arado. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief uh, presentation. I'd also like to thank Mahdi Ahadian and Hamadan Haran for providing the, a lot of background history and photos of the area and uh, really appreciate his help. Again, thank you and I hope you enjoyed the presentation and get the book.